All right. Welcome back to this journey that we are taking together, reading Take the Money and Run by This Apple Pie Life. So we are back today with chapter four. Are we on chapter four? We're on chapter four, baby. Yes. Chapter four. This chapter is Me and Paul, which is a song by... I, I want to say Paul <laughs> Simon. Am I wrong? Willie Nelson. Willie I Nelson. wasn't even close. That's yeah. Paul Simon. That's terrible. Okay. <laughs> Willie Nelson. Okay. Good to yes. know. It's a fun song, kind of country. Mm. And do you remember reading the author's notes about the the scene in this in this chapter of the fic? Ooh, remind me because I okay. think I grazed over it. This, the scene, the funny scene that we'll get to at the end mm-hmm. of the chapter is the first scene that they wrote for this fic. Oh, interesting. And it was based on an idea that they had from like the lyrics of this song where it says almost busted in Laredo, but for reasons that I'd rather not disclose. But if you're staying in a motel there and leave, just don't leave nothing in your clothes. (laughs) That is perfect. That is absolutely perfect. And I love that that was where it all stemmed from. That's awesome. Yeah. I love that. That was the first like, the lyrics that inspired like basically the whole story and then they were like well why are they in a hotel together like what's going on Mm. oh they're they need to go on a road trip (laughs) so perfect yeah that was a funny little connection for this this scene or this chapter but then it's also just kind of a cool song the other lyric that they chose at the beginning was we received our education in the cities of the nation and this apple pie life said that that was kind of like the working title of the whole fic for a while too oh i like that that's really interesting wow yeah that's awesome because that's kind of a cool like it's a theme throughout the story of kind of them learning as they travel together about each other and just about things in general so do you want to know how bad I am? When I said Paul Simon, I literally thought of that song, Me and Julio by the Schoolyard. I was like, that's called Me and Paul, right? No, it's not. I just remember I got a ride to the airport once from my friend Curtis, who's an ex-magician. So there you go. And he was <laughs> blasting it. Shout out and Curtis. I re- <laughs> shout out Curtis. And I remember just dying at that song. I was like, wow, you're really rocking out to this. But Willie Nelson is, uh, he's an icon, much like Paul Simon. Are you a fan of his music? Um, I mean, not like in any any particular way. Yeah. But um, yeah, you can definitely tell that this author's a huge music fan. And, you know, every chapter, as we've discussed, is named after a different song. And, you know, the playlist is just flawless, absolutely flawless. So this was a really fun chapter. And I like that we kind of pick up with them continuing the shenanigans of taking photos near signs that say Henderson. I really love that. You really got a sense in this chapter that like, that's basically how Eddie is planning his whole route. It's like just looking for towns called Henderson. (laughs) Man, had no idea there were so many. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Who knew? So yeah, that was really funny where they're trying to take a photo together and Eddie's trying to hop on Steve's back. Shoulders. Oh, my God. They had the lady take it. And I love that he's like, easy with the hair. Steve says that to <laughs> Eddie. And Eddie's like, sorry, right in his ear. <laughs> <sighs> Those yeah, boys. They were, they were cracking me up because they were just being, like, silly and, like, <laughs> having fun together, which was nice after kind of the heavier chapter right yeah. before this so um it was you could tell that they were you know starting to have a lot of fun and then they went out and that was super fun because steve got a little tipsy yep which i love like right beforehand and this goes to show you like the amount of detail that's put into it you know um if you go back to the original fic there's photos and you know this author did their research of showing what tourist attractions were open in 1986 and, you know, what was going on. And I really liked the part right before they hit New Orleans 
that they he goes sweet and he finds coupons for wendy's and Mm -hmm. steve Mm -hmm. at first is like what's the big deal and then it kind of hits him he's like i've never used a coupon before in my life so it's almost like culture shock a little bit for steve and a little humbling i'm sure but i just loved that moment that eddie's so excited that they got coupons for some wendy's you know and just you know you eat like absolute garbage 99 percent of the time when you're on a road trip so it tracks Yeah. Yeah. And I think, like you said, the author included like an image of the coupons. Like Mm -hmm. that was pretty cool to see like what they looked like. And I was I re-listened to my podfic of this chapter and I feel like before I post it, I don't know. I don't know if you noticed, but I thought a couple of the sound effects were a little too loud like that. I used a sound effect of somebody like um, waving a paper around, (laughs) which was like I think it's okay, but it was like. I listened in the car and I was like, oh, that was too loud. So if anybody ever notices <laughs> that the sound effects are too loud, please just let me know. I can fix Turn them. the volume up all the way. <laughs> yeah. You'll feel like somebody's It'll in the car blow with your, you. Blow your ears out. <laughs> I um, love it. Yeah. But that was cool. And then where do they go? They are in New Orleans, right? There we go. Yep. Yes. So unfortunately, no real travel connections for me this uh, episode. I have not been to New Orleans yet, but you have, Stacy. I have. I went um, last January um, to actually meet Joseph Quinn. So I found that really funny. I'd never been before. Um, I went with my friends Jeanette, Andy, and Brandy. Andy and Brandy had gone dozens of times, and they even got married down there. So it was nice being with people who actually like knew the layout and you know where to go. So when they were talking about Bourbon Street, I I was tickled pink because I was like, oh, I was there, and. I don't know what it was like in 1986, but um, it's definitely ratchet. Um, It's a 24-hour party. Uh, You can literally walk around with an open container, which blows my mind. Um, A lot of people are smoking, so that shows that times have changed with this story and now. It's just a 24-hour party. Um, Not really my scene. Maybe 20-year-old Stacey would have really dug that. 34-year-old Stacey was like, things are so loud. We need to stay together. (laughs) But I had a lot of fun and the weather is beautiful. And, you know, we were so wrapped up with the con that we didn't really get a chance to explore. But yeah. when I re- re-listened and reread this story, I was like, oh, okay. And I find it really funny that Eddie takes Steve to a topless bar. I thought that was hilarious. You know, I thought that was, yeah, hilarious too. But before they go there, or it might have been even like the night before, because they're there mm-hmm. for a couple nights. Yes. Yeah. I thought it was cool that Eddie found a metal scene, like an yes. underground metal scene in New Orleans. And then they also went to like a jazz bar, just so like those two kind of different music scenes, like coexisting in the city I think that was pretty cool and it was interesting because so whenever there's like a map or an image I try to find a sound effect so that Mm -hmm. sound effect that I found was actually somebody kind of probably driving down Bourbon Street in New Orleans and it was like a music that you could hear coming out of different places Mm -hmm. and it was like you could hear kind of like music that almost sounded like metal and then later in the clip you could hear like jazz sounds so i thought it kind of fit right there perfectly yeah because new orleans is very very musical orientated for obvious reasons and i think it was funny that eddie was able to find kind of like an underground metal scene we went to a bar that was playing nothing but nine inch nails like you know dio you know a dancing like all music that probably eddie would have listened to the place looks like a dungeon it was really cool i think it was even called the dungeon but then you would go to like a really nice jazz lounge where people are you know drinking bourbon and smoking cigars so that really hit the nail on the head with the music scene down there and i can only imagine what it was like back in the 80s you know yeah it would have been really cool i'm sure so uh the only knowledge i have of new orleans is from watching the spin-off of the vampire diaries which is called the originals <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love you. I haven't seen that. That sounds amazing. You could you can watch the originals if you haven't seen the Vampire Diaries, but it like there's characters that kind of overlap too. So I know Brandy and I are always trying to get you to watch the Vampire Diaries, but they'll convert me one day, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> one day. 
it's it's so funny too to see because so many movies and TV shows and novels are set down there just because of the history, you know. And it's it's definitely interesting after Katrina and everything, you know, just seeing what it looks like now. So it's interesting to see almost like a little bird's eye view of life before all that destruction that happened yeah. in tragedy back in the eighties, where these boys are just kind of bar hopping and you know just chilling out and kind of just going with the groove um i thought that was really interesting yeah but then let's talk about the topless and bottomless yes <laughs> dancers <laughs> oh my god that was hilarious because i i think i don't know if i understood the first time i read it that the, the bottomless part was like that's why Steve was like, oh, I think the, their 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 songs or whatever they're wearing were supposed to look like yep. they were naked. <laughs> and I love that Eddie is just shaking his head, just kind of like trying to like weekend bar- bar- Bernie's him, you know, down the street. He's like, yeah, OK, yeah, no, not really interested. Yeah, I, I thought it was really funny that like Steve kind of like loosened up. I mean, it was, you know, due to the alcohol, but it was funny seeing him kind of sloshed a little bit and yeah. him catching a buzz which guys if you've gone down bourbon street you know you know like woo, you know they they do a heavy pour down there and i really loved like how quickly he got drunk and then eddie trying to undress him for bed and he's like you need to lift your legs up and literally <laughs> steve's just like a rag doll loved it that was really fun to record too because i had f- fun doing like steve's like mm-hmm. drunk voice <laughs> it was so good i loved it <laughs> oh, but yeah they were really funny and eddie was like oh gosh i shouldn't have like given him so many drinks because now i'm dealing with the consequences Mm -hmm. but he was kind of like sweet with him like he was helping him and he was like putting him on the inside like on the sidewalk like yeah just like taking care of him and being there for him and and taking his pants off for him (laughs) I mean, he he (laughs) took one for the team, you know, I'm sure taking Steve Harrington's pants off, you know, is quite a job, but (laughs) he did it, you know. That's like the little details, like you've said before in this fic, that just like, you can just picture it. Like, you can Mm -hmm. just picture that scene. It's like a movie in your head, like, of what's exactly what's happening, and it's hilarious, and like, I don't know. It was just so funny. But um so good. And then the sweet part where so Steve's like you said, he's loosened up a little bit and he hears Eddie having a nightmare and he doesn't even yeah. like think twice. He just goes over and lays with him and comforts him. And oh. you can tell that they've talked a little bit about it because he knows like, oh, this must be a Chrissy nightmare because he's upset instead of scared. Like, yeah. So just bringing back those details from like the canon that mm-hmm. remind you that like this was after the events of season four. The only difference being that Eddie is alive. Yeah. But they're both still kind of healing from that trauma. And I think that's something that we always appreciate seeing and fix yes. if they are somewhat canon compliant of like having them work through some of that trauma together so yeah them trauma bonding very very interesting and i love how you just said like you know this clearly was something that they've gone through or have discussed because you yeah. knew what kind of nightmare it was and just steve forever the protector you know not even the babysitter but the protector and him laying down with him you know last chapter you know he couldn't stand eddie and then it goes to show you that his heart's in the right place you know and it's just a tender moment that really makes you you know remember like oh yeah just a few months prior like they saw some real horrific shit you know yeah yeah exactly and then again it's kind of like balanced out with a humorous scene (laughs) with um the housekeepers finding the weed in his pocket (laughs) <laughs> my god i'm not gonna name any names um but let's just say i was at a hotel once with some friends and um one of my friends was like do you want to go to a breakfast buffet and it was like six o'clock at night and i was like i almost said no but then i was like no let me go and i went with my friend and we ate and it was wonderful food and we came back and there was a squad car and uh there were dogs and um oh. let's just say 
some people in the room got busted and had to pay really big fines and we just sat in the lobby and like waited until they left but literally i was like that breakfast buffet saved my life <laughs> so guys it actually happens for realsies and it's terrifying but like think this was before like it was you know legal or anything Semi legal yeah my legal ohio back then <laughs> Jesus. Fucking ohio no offense to anybody from Ohio, but literally, like, it's 1986, like, that's going to happen, and they're yeah. going to try to find a way to get paid off or kick you out. And what was it? Like, Eddie sent his stuff out to get cleaned, and he left yeah. weed in his clothes? Yeah, it was apparently, like, I think, a film canister that had some some weed in it, and that was in his pocket of his jeans that they had sent down, I guess, to do laundry. And I was like... Fancy. I've never had laundry yeah. done at a hotel. <laughs> yeah, damn. Okay, New Orleans. <laughs> they kind of like asked for like a bribe because Steve was yep. like, here, take 20 bucks. And then they were like, more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because back in 1986. Ooh, yeah. Man. That was a good chunk of change. He ended up giving them both $70. So, which, you know, that's. That sucks, but we've all seen Midnight Express. Like, you you don't want to end up in a prison, you know, um, let it be Turkish or New Orleans. So yeah. they had to do what they had to do, and I right. love them just scrambling to get the F out of Dodge. I really did love that, because I was like, yeah, that tracks. That would make sense, you know? Yeah. No, but the best part was, like, Steve is so like, okay, let's get out of here, and Eddie's just kind of like, sort of in shock but also just like what is going on <laughs> and it's like, yeah oh i my theory though was that partially this was partially because steve comes out of the bathroom in his towel so he's watching oh. steve with this whole interaction in his I towel mean, sopping wet because i mean i would probably get a little distracted by i that. know could you <laughs> imagine i oh my god <laughs> but then he gets his apple and his muffin and he's standing outside the car because he's not allowed to eat in the car. Just eating. Oh, my God. It killed me. Absolutely killed me. And they're yeah. so good at comedic moments like that because it just it feels just like what these characters would do. You know, yeah. it's so well done. It's so realistic for the characters. And then it's just like the timing or whatever of the writing is like um and steve says just get in the car and then eddie eats in the car every day after that <laughs> yeah and i love that it's crossed off i mean yeah. <laughs> perfect that list is slowly getting eliminated which is just perfect i really loved that and then this, you know it kind of like yet again it's a yin and a yang you know you go from this really funny scene to you know it shows them getting ready for bed again and steve notices that eddie sleeps like fully clothed like yeah you know in his jeans shoes i did want to mention that the hangover breakfast was also hilarious <laughs> the hangover breakfast is so relatable because we've all been there and That's i just love exactly that what i was thinking <laughs> gets a huge breakfast and i'm like oh yeah if you know you know like you're gonna eat like a complete raccoon and it's just like it's so relatable but i love that they have this like huge smorgasbord a food just to nurse their hangovers and their pride, you know? Yeah, and Eddie's like, he, there's no way he's going to eat all that. And then he does. And I think that it was funny that Steve was like, was kind of like a friendly hungover person. Like he was like, mm -hmm. hungover Steve was not as pissy as I thought he would be. <laughs> I love that. I love that. It's just him getting to know him a little bit better, but just such a comedic moment, you know? And then, like I said, it switches to... You know, the next night, another tender, right? Another and he tender sees him moment. look, and it's him wearing jeans and this and that. And like Steve will basically strip down to nothing. And he's like, he actually asks him, "Why don't you ever yeah. get comfortable?" And Megan, could we talk about like what what Eddie's response is? Yeah. So he basically says that his life before he came and lived with Wayne was kind of unpredictable so he sort of always had to be ready to go which mm -hmm. so he said that the events of spring break kind of brought him back to that like mindset of not Almost really like flight yeah. yeah yeah 
and it makes sense because like his big thing with season four is you know i ran i always run i did what i do now i ran and it's almost like this is kind of like programmed in his brain since he was a kid that he could never get comfortable or relax or feel safe he always had to be one foot out the door and yeah. like you said, the trauma of everything that happened, it almost has him reset, you know, from all the progress he probably made living with Wayne and feeling at home and safe that something could happen again and you got to get ready to go. And it kind of like it, it shows Steve looking at Eddie a little differently, like, oh, wow, like this, yeah. this really affected him, you know? Yeah. And he's sweet because he's like. I, I'm never going to leave you. Like, mm. I told you that That now. reassurance. Like, yeah. Like, being, you're safe with me, and you don't have to, like, always be ready to run. Um, And he takes his pants off to sleep, and Steve Hell is like, yeah. this is a monumental, <laughs> monumental progress. So, yep. yeah. That was a really sweet moment to end the chapter on. Yeah. Yeah. I loved this chapter. I thought it was really great to just, you know, like we said, you know, there would be a serious moment, then a comedic moment. They visited a really cool city. Yeah. And um, you're seeing kind of the progress that's going through with them, you know, spending all this time together, which is the ultimate slow burn. It's just so good, you know? Yeah. But it's building that intimacy so that, like, it feels right real. when it, yeah. when it, yeah, it feels real. Yeah. So so good but amazing job good loved listening to your voice i uh oh thank you went on uh i got my steve tattoo today i will send you a picture so you can post it but um literally yeah. i was driving you know to the city where my tattoo artist was and i was listening to you and i was like that megan what a soothing voice so <laughs> excellent excellent job dude loved it well thank you it's it's been so fun and i've been um excited to hear from people that they're enjoying it so it makes me motivated to keep recording more chapters so <laughs> we can keep on keep on trucking <laughs> mm -hmm. all right sounds good well it was nice to talk to you as always and we'll be back soon with chapter five all right over and out guys over and out <laughs> <laughs>